Finally. Dream Reaver 23! Hello everybody, welcome back. Dream Reaver 23 here with another Let's Play episode. I am joined by Chris. Hello, dude. And by Mr. Man, I can't say that. <laughs> Mr. is our ominous non-talker and... Uh, he does have a voice. I have heard it. Uh, some of you have heard it if you watched. I can't remember what episode it was. And that maybe that's a mystery. Tell me what video Mr. actually spoke in. And I went off on him for speaking. And uh, put it in the comments below if you can find it. So we got Computer Craft installed. This is the dilemma. We got Computer Craft installed. And there are shit for tutorials out there on Computer Craft. And... Nobody ever talks in the tutorials, and that's something that bugs me because they never explain anything out. There's very, I, I think I found two to where people actually talked, but they didn't really show you how to do anything. Basically, they show you what they did. This is what I did, and uh, you never got to see the actual programming for it. And so what we set up here, my big thing is I wanted to use bundled cable. Using bundled cable to have different outputs so that you could have one bundled cable going to... 16 different colors because there's 16 different colors for red power and so I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial it's not going to be um, covering everything that you want it to do but it does cover a lot of, of good basics that I had to sit there and, and look up and try to read for about uh, two hours to try to get um, I do want to thank Neo Neo Boy 11 he actually helped me fine-tune some of the stuff and get some of the bugs out uh, this little program that we made but uh, basically, we have a bunch of different colors, and I wanted to try to go in order for a few and then see if I could bounce around and see what it would do. So, without further ado, if we go through and uh, enter into cr to, to the computer, just right-click on it, type in <laughs> your dork. <laughs> programs, and it's going to go through and pull up the list of programs that are in there. Well, to create a new program, you actually go through and type in edit... Uh, new program and bam a new program a new is created program. well th it's just the name that I that I put on there for the for the variable well, so, so edit and then whatever the program right. name so you want. edit space and then we'll exit uh, and if you exit it doesn't save the program yeah programs so as you see on there there is no new program program so in that same sense, uh, edit space, coolest program ever. And it does make it easier to read if you use camel case. Camel case is where the first letter of the first word is lowercase. Uh, and then each additional word afterward, there's no space in between them. For me, I always use camel case. It's just in all my programming classes, you use camel case. So the P in program is capitalized. The E in ever is capitalized. So coolest program ever. Um, print print basically just outputs something to the screen hello you sexy beast bam make sure you have your parentheses and your quotation marks done right and then we shall do shell Let's see. Let's do OS dot shutdown. Control, and that's going to hit pull up to save. So S for save, and then Control E for exit. Now, if we go to and type programs, there's one right there in this this little corner right here. It says coolest program ever. So let's type in coolest program. If I could type ever doesn't do anything because we didn't give the commands correctly but quick easy way to show up how to even start creating a program in game if you do this uh, on your on just a single player it's not terrible because you can actually edit files in notepad and have a lot more you know control over what you can do copy and pasting and everything and just bring them back up into your into your uh, computer craft folder and be able to run them from there but since this is on a server we don't have direct well most of my people don't have direct access. I do have direct access, and I could put uh, codes in there on the server in the file, but I don't want to. So let's see. Control-R, 
hold that down for a second that reboots the craft OS and now to look at the program that we did so I did test underscore LP for let's play so test underscore LP would you like to see a demo of bundled cables type yes or no so we'll say yes watch the pretty colors And it goes through and cycles through, and then it goes through and does that for five seconds. Jumps over to blue because I wanted to see if it could jump around. And then, is that all that it does? Yeah, I think yeah. blue is the last one. All right, so would you like to see a demo? Then it basically loops back to itself, so it calls itself again. And I will say no this time because I don't want to see the demo again. No. And it gives you a nice little ugly thing that it says. <laughs> and exits the program. So right click to go back in there. Now I want to show you guys the code that we actually did. So that's a quick demo of what it does. Let's go into show what it is. So let's go back and edit test underscore LP. All right. So the first thing it does is term dot clear, which clears the screen. Term dot set cursor POS one one uh, parentheses. So it's setting your, your cursor back up in the top very left hand corner. It prints to the screen, would you like to see a demo of bundled cables? Uh, and then whenever you end that sentence, basically, it's going to put that on the screen. If you put another print, yes, it, it's basically a line break. So it drops down to the next line and says yes, and then drops down another line and says no. Input equals read. So that basically tells it you're expecting an input to come in. Okay, So you're expecting the person to type something in response, either yes or no. Uh, and then yes equals yes with parentheses around it is actually a variable. You don't have to name your variables out, so you don't have to say you know VAR uh, yes, so you don't have to do that on there. You just basically put a named variable up there, so yes equals yes. <laughs> I know that kind of sounds redundant, but I could change that to anything. I could say answer. Answer equals yes. All right. So if input, okay, then it does, this is the next line it does. Shell.run clear, which clears the screen again. We could have done term clear if we wanted to. But shell.run is basically, uh, there's a certain command called clear, which clears the screen. If input equals yes, which is what it was, we'll change that to answer. It makes more sense as yes, but I'm just showing you this as an example. If input equals, the equal equal sign says that it is exactly this, answer then print to the screen, watch the pretty colors, <clears throat> and then we get into the magic. So RS stands for redstone, a redstone uh, symbol coming, a signal going out, dot set bundled output, so it's saying that there's a bundled output. If I, I could have put it on just set output. Set output sends a redstone signal to your variables. Um, back, uh, so whenever you have that, that's saying um, uh, to the back side, to, the, to which side of the computer? Um, back, uh, bottom, top, left, right. Back, bottom, top, back, bottom, top, left, right. Yeah, five. <laughs> Sorry, it's kind of late. Uh, five different inputs. So I could have made this to where it says top if I had something on the top, if I had a bundled cable going out of the top of it, uh, which gives you, if you think about it, you have a, you could have a bundled cable going out of the back, you could have a bundled cable going out of the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. That's five outputs that you could have of bundled cables. There's 16 colors in each bundled cable. So you could have, what's 16 times 5? 130? No, 80. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. 80, yeah, it's 80. So you could have 80 different outputs this you could have this one computer giving directions to 80 different things if you set up a program correctly which is pretty cool so um, rs dot set bundled output the output that we're referring to is the back one which if we go around here you can see that it's connected to the back of the computer top obviously is up here bottom is below it left right makes sense correct swaps if it was just a redstone wire that you got in your hand if it was just the redstone wire, you could actually just put output because it's not going to a bundled cable. So you would just hit set output, 
and that would make it to where uh, the back and and you you could put instead of putting colors dot lime, you would put just back true. If you wanted to do oh. that, um, and I can actually show a quick demo of that as well here in a second. So whatever you have the set bundled output that goes and gives you the ability to, to use colors. The colors are actually it reads red put a red put red power bundled cables and it says all right there's colors associated with me i have all the colors that i can choose from but it goes off the names of the uh, the uh, ooh, ooh, i didn't mean to type that of the bundled cables so since i'm in creative you have light blue pink blue red magenta white da -da 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 -da, all these so those are associated not with the lights that are attached to it but with the insulated cable wires that are right here all right so this one right here is well there that's yellow okay so I, if i wanted to add another line right here after blue i keep trying to click like it's a regular program um rs dot set bundled output and we're going to go through the back again because it's on the back side colors dot yellow And we're going to say to sleep. Wake up to sleep. The sleep basically tells it how long to hold that color before it goes to the next uh, f uh, uh, instruction, basically. So, like, if we look at the top one up here, go and scroll on up here. One second. Right. So, RS set bundled output back light. Basically, it's telling it in, in layman's terms on the back side of this computer, there's the, the bundled cable. Through that bundled cable, send a signal to uh, the lime color insulated cable for one second. That sleep one is saying to do that for one second. And then after that, through that same back bundled cable, send one to the white for one second. Correct, yeah. So, and then it goes down, send one to orange for one second, and then send one to pink for five seconds. Send one to blue for two seconds. So it's not going to do the 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 next function until it gets finished sleeping. Um, set bundled output, let's see, I just added this back one, or this back one, this last one, back going to the yellow for, we'll make it for three seconds. And you don't have to put in the, the .0, it, I just, it's kind of a habit for me. And then, then it's going to go through and ask if you want to run it again. If you type yes, it'll keep going through this. So it'll keep looping through that if you, if you want it to. Um, so let's hit Control S to save, Control E to exit, test underscore LP to run the command. And the cool thing about the cool thing about working on a server with it is because we can actually, Chris, if you go in through there and Whenever I go in there, it doesn't say anything, right? So I haven't typed anything. Chris, hit, type in yes, but don't uh, hit enter yet. So Chris typed in yes. So we can both see what's happening in real time, which is really great for working with somebody else and trying to figure out the bugs. That's got to be the nicest thing. All right, go ahead and hit enter, Chris, and I will show them the demo. So it goes green, white, orange, pink, or magenta, whatever that is five seconds and it's going to go to blue for two seconds and then yellow for three now it's going to stay lit on yellow because it loops back around to this other function so it basically right there it's saying hey i'm you told me to after that to to do this other function which is the same test dot l underscore lp um so i'm doing this program again do you want to continue we'll say no it goes off and gets mad and then exits the thing which shuts down any outputs that are going through there. So pretty cool uh, and and just going in and, and kind of like editing that test LP you can actually see how some of these functions actually work and how you should you should kind of make them get set up. Um, print function <clears throat> goes through and uh, or the print keyword, I guess I should say, goes through and, and basically prints out to the screen. Now, we could have also used um, write 
write w r i t e says like if i go through right here and i type this as write hopefully it's not going to mess up on me <laughs> cuz that's just my luck so write no control s control e it should still print the same thing to the screen and it did but with print it doesn't it, it goes down and drops another line with write it actually has me put the stuff in here it still functions as, uh, the same way yeah. we're watching the pretty colors no we don't want to look at them again so that's where that will will differ um, control R to reboot test no let's edit so that's what the difference is between write and print that's something that I didn't really see covered in a lot of the stuff but we can see exactly what it does so let's change this back to print now I see that you have put a little test out here to the side so with that going uh, let's do another little line right here print maybe actually we'll change this to single all right we'll make another variable right here that says uh, other equals single all right so if input answer equals yes da -da -da -da, I do all that We'll add another little line right here that says, else if input equals, single. equals did I put other? Well, because it, basically we declared it up top. Uh, with that right there, we said, all right, if. Oh, yeah, you declared other. So, yeah, since I put other as the variable name and typed it, if they type in single, it equals other basically it makes that variable so if I go down here and I put in else if input equals other rs dot set, set output. output and that's so with the left side that left? yeah left true uh, and have it sleep for four seconds. So, control S, this might have a bug in it. Control S to save, control, and it's not control plus S at the same time, it's control, and it'll pop up this little thing at the bottom, save, exit, and then E to exit. Let's see if that worked. Then was expected. So, that's what was wrong with there. So is that line 32? Right. Good question, good question. All right, so it's saying basically right there, string test LP. So in the test LP, the colon 32 colon is saying on line 32, it's expecting a then statement. So counting is kind of a precarious. I know exactly which one it was because we, we wrote it <laughs> just now. It's the only thing that's changed. So it's saying right there, else if input equals other, then do this. And I forgot to put the then statement in. <clears throat> So it's going to do RS output left true for four seconds and then sleep. All right, for four seconds, then do the, the test LP again. Control S, Control E. So it helps you troubleshoot a little bit. With it, that. it does. Um, the only thing is that if you have kind of a complicated code, and say you got through typing all this code and you didn't test anything beforehand, and you had 100 lines of code in there, then it'd be like, all right, on line 68, 
I'm expecting a parenthesis or, you know, something along those lines. And in parentheses. Yeah. Then you're going to be like, fuck, I don't, uh, I got to count these. And you have to sit there and count them. Still expecting a then. Let's see. Did I not save? I should have saved. Yeah. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, thirty-two, forty-five, sixty-six, seventy, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. 30, 31, 32. Oh, what do you know? It's right there. Ow, ow. You know what I missed? It's equals equals, not just equals. Oh, yeah, because if input equal equals answer, then. Right, so it's saying, is it exactly this? So that's that's what was messed up on there. So control, two control. equal signs? Yeah, two equal signs, because basically um, one equal signs is um, declaring that it is this. Uh, two is like your two answer. is saying exact, yeah, exactly is this. Would you like to see a demo of bundled cables? We'll see if the yes still works, which it should. Watch the pretty colors, yay! Maybe I should have made that shorter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that should be done. Come back over here. Would you like to see bundled cables? No, we'll still work, and we'll type in single. Bam, motherfucker! Should do that for five seconds, and then... Cool. Let's type it in again, and I'll time it from this side. Single, one, two, three, four, five. All right. No. Now, one thing to consider as well is test underscore LP. Let's edit this one again. <clears throat> one thing that I kind of had the question about was that should we go back through here and type in false? So basically RS dot set output. Bam. <laughs> I can't type for shit. Left false. After the four seconds. Right. So after the four seconds, and then I can make it to where it sleeps it for off. another. Sleep for another two seconds. And then do the shell run. Would you like to see blah, 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 single. Four seconds. Turn off for two seconds. And yeah, then. Should back on. Yep, and then it comes back into the demo screen. I'll do that again. Yeah, see, just that, so. way it, that way it powers it off. Right. And it sounds good when you're in there. Exactly. So, quick demo, guys. I know that uh, it's it's. there's still a lot of unanswered questions. There's still a lot of stuff that I want to figure out more of. Uh, I know that you can do the FL statements. You can do while statements. You can do for statements. Uh, which if, if you don't have any idea about programming, those are just different things that you can go through it for incrementer and, and like kind of have these, these situations where they're happening. Um, you can do different stuff to where you're saying it's connected to either other computers or those situations. And I want to learn all these, uh, we're going to cut this video off <clears throat> for now. That was a pretty good demo. I think, thank you so much, Chris and Mr. You were, you were, you were, you were a big help. <laughs> I think the only thing you said in this video was hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, until next time, guys. If you guys would like me to do more videos uh, that are for computer craft, let me know. If you have certain things that you'd like to have us test, uh, put them in a comment below. Say, hey, Dream, you know, I would like to see if you could do something like this with it or how you would program something like this. I love working because that's what I go to school for is, is programming, web development and, uh, and computer programming and stuff like that. So uh, the language is pretty simple. It's kind of a C-based language. Uh, it's, it's not terribly difficult to pick up on. It's just more of the exploration of the programming and seeing what goes on with it. So uh, we do have another video that's going to be coming out. What are you typing in here? Uh, actually, the other video is going to be coming out before this one. We recorded a video last night, and I haven't been able to get it edited and everything put up here. 
Uh, so you will actually see two videos coming up rapidly. This one and the one previously before this, which I've, yeah, I guess that doesn't work out right. But anyways. How do you spell Nick Glare? <laughs> N-U-C-L-E-A-R. <laughs> Global nuclear war. Would you like to play a game? I think it was global thermonuclear war. I don't know. Hey, that was a quick question for you. Do you have to have this disc drive here? Uh, no, you don't have to. The computer will work. The disc drive basically allows you to go through and insert in diskettes. And with the diskettes, you can actually copy the program that you made onto that diskette and bring it over to another computer. So you don't have to retype the whole program out because uh, the computers in, in computer craft are individuals. Like if I go through here and uh, get rid of this and type in programs, it's going to go through. Oh, I need to. Uh, let's see. ID. If you type in slash ID, it tells you this is computer number 98. If I made another computer right beside it, can you throw down a computer? Slash I. Net slash C L E A R I M V E N T O I slash I two o eight I think it's two o eight one <laughs> that's the side two o seven so if I were to put this one down right here <clears throat> and turn it on and type in ID this is computer number ninety nine so they go sequentially in order but they're not the same things if I type in programs on this computer let's play test test underscore LP is not on here because that program doesn't exist. <clears throat> and this is actually a pretty good little demo. What's the diskette number? You can just summon it. Just, it's... Oh, yeah, you can just summon a diskette, can't you? Yeah. Alright, so I have a diskette. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and put the diskette in here. Copy. So it's saying source and destination. Copy. LP underscore test. test. LP. Yeah, test and then destination is going to be. All right, I had to do some quick checking. Um, now we're going to first go through and pull up our directories and see what is on here. So directories, uh, let's type in uh, CD floppy disk. Not a directory. Okay, yeah. CD floppy disk. Not a directory. One one. So we put a floppy disk in there. Well, I just I just inserted one in there, so it should be good now. Oh, I hear you. Oh, well, you already had it. Go to copy test underscore LP to floppy disk. File exists. All right, now if we go through and change directory to floppy disk, change directory to disk drive. Change directory to ROM. It's crazy how there's so little information out there for this. No, oh, trust me, I know. Making me look like a fool here, computer. 
Let's see if that, because it did say file exists. Okay, so let's see if we can go over here. Put the disk in and type in directory. CD. Reboot. Programs. DIR. Alright, so I changed, I, on this one I was able to pull up that it has disk and ROM. Um, let's see, on disk we have, let's see if I can type in test underscore LP. No such program. Poopy! Alright, this I will figure out. Hey, you know what? You guys figured it out for me. Tell me what I need to do to do that. Um, yeah. Until next time, guys, I am DreamRiver23. Why do I have so many directories over here? And we will see you later. So, not the perfect one, I know, but it's got commentary, and that beats out everybody else. Oh, and that's Mr. Mr. is Mr. So, uh, we will see you next time, guys. Let us know if you want us to do more computer craft tutorials. If you have certain things that you want to cover, want covered and everything like that, I will figure out and probably post another video of... Uh, <laughs> just how to save programs to directories that you create and then just put them on other disks. I'll figure all that out. But we will see you next time, guys. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. And uh, if you like this video, if it, if it uh, did help you out, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe. Leave a comment saying that, uh, you know, it helped you out with something. Uh, if you want to see us do videos over something in specific, hey, I want to see how to power a nuclear reactor and also open a door up and do all different things for a whole nuclear facility hey cool let us know so we can do, get it all knocked out thank you guys for watching and we will see you next time bye guys and you gotta have space toad because you know the build craft makes me smile and industrial craft because my nuclear reactor gives the power to inspire these blocks feel like doc brown gonna make a time machine in game 1.21 we got the spawner says start dropping spiders and creepers and zombies as well with their arms in the air and blazes, cave spider skeletons, jockeys of slimes, and magma cube silverfish. Yeah, the Pikmin are nice. Unless you attack them, then they're coming at you like a swarm of bees. You're running like crazy just to get away from them. Get through the portal and finally can breathe. <sighs> All this for some glowstone dust. Now that I'm back, I see it's not enough to build.